Hello, in this tutorial you'll learn how to create this effect of a paper wrapping a Ferrero Rocher. And we'll use the knowledge from these other three tutorials I posted in the past weeks on my Patreon. You don't need to watch them to understand this tutorial. Just if you want to dive deeper to the point of being comfortable with each topic and see different examples. Before explaining my strategy, let's create a paper setup for vellum. I've set my hip file units to centimeters and grams, created a circular planner patch in the ZX plane with 0.05 edge length and uniform scale 10. Gave it point UVs, typed configure cloth to add fast vellum cloth constraints and changed the default density to 1. Increased damping ratio for stretch and bend by erasing a 0 in both. Enabled plasticity for bend with threshold 0.1 and rate 10. The crumpled paperball tutorial explains these settings. And now I explain my strategy. The first time I tried to wrap a crumpled cloth to the Rocher, I could never keep the wrinkles because the simulation stretched them out. Then I decided to divide and conquer. I created two layers of effects that I could art direct independently. I first created a sheet of paper which shrinks to create the crumples, and then I wrapped the sheet around the chocolate. How did I do it? First, select some points to shrink and pull the paper. Add a point VOP called Gradient and Bias because inside it we'll add two bind exports for the new attributes, which are called gradient and bias. Add a length node and wire it to the position, to measure the distance from the center of the paper to each point, because the center of the paper is where the position is zero in all three axes. Now I need to fit this distance between zero and one to normalize it, so the center where the distance is zero is gonna become one, and the borders, which are around five centimeters away, are gonna become zero. This is gonna be our gradient. Now I'll use the other attribute bias to select the points based on two factors. First, a random value based on the position. If we connect it to our bias export and visualize the bias, you see that the random values is grouped in squares for each centimeter of the grid. You need to uncheck clamp position to integer to make each point random. Now I'll multiply each random value with the other factor I base my bias on, which is the gradient itself. But I'll use a ramp parameter to control this gradient. Go up, reset this ramp, and add a group expression node to create a point group called pins, and say we want the points which have the bias attribute greater than 0.95. Tweak this ramp until you get the most points in this area just around the center, but not much in the center itself. Where you have the most points, you have more wrinkles. So that's why I want to have a few points just this distance from the borders where there are less wrinkles. Then I ended up selecting some additional points manually with a group create node set to union with existing. You could have done it completely manually, but I think this way you can make changes faster once everything is set up. Now, point selected, wire a transform node to affect pins only and animate its uniform scale from 1 to 0.75, from the first to the second frame. I just wanted a simulation to start stretch it. It will not look so fast in the end because I created this mops fell off attribute that will paint this effect in the vellum simulation from center to ends. And how we use it? I wired a constraint node that will pin to target only the points in the pins group set pin type to soft for position and orientation and tick match animation. And then scale the stretch stiffness by attribute using the attribute you just created. I also increased the dumping ratio for less springing motion. Now we can add a vellum solver, increase substeps and constraint iterations, add the ground so that your sheet will have a flat bottom, transform the sheet to be 0.005 units above the ground, Make gravity close to none, like minus 10, and zero out ground friction for the paper to slide freely. Now, you often be in this situation where you have an animated attribute map and want this to influence your vellum simulation. How to do that? The best solution I've found is to animate the constraint geometry in SOPs and transfer it to DOPs. First, wire an enumerate node to your constraints and create an ID attribute for its primitives. We need to do this because the vellum solver changes the primitive numbers of your constraints. So now we have a way to call the right primitives from SOPs in DOPs. Then dive inside DOPs and add a geometry wrangle that will run over every primitive of the constraint geometry. This is the constraint geometry that lives inside DOPs. 
not the one from SOPS. Now set the input 2 to be the second context geometry. This is the constraint geometry from SOPS. Let's set the stiffness of the DOPS constraints. And it will get a primitive attribute from the second context geometry, which is from SOPS. We want the stiffness from a primitive number that we'll call prim. Because we'll set this prim integer variable to get a primitive number from geometry 1, which is again the primitives from SOPS. And we'll get this primitive number from a primitive with the same ID as our DOPS geometry. This should work. And it is. Now, let's soften this effect by reducing the pinter target stiffness to 100 and cache the simulation. At this point, you may notice in your scene that as the paper shrinks, it pulls the falloff growth. You can go back and forth adjusting the falloff animation to compensate for that and creating versions until you are happy. Layer 1 is done. Now let's wrap it. You need a mesh that you can use as a lattice to deform the points of your crumpled sheet later. For this shot, I just needed to make a twisting elevation in the center. First thing, you need a mesh to guide the twist. And second, you need a collision mesh to guide the elevation. So let's prep those meshes. First start by copying the previous setup from the circular patch until the file cache. And half the resolution of the patch. Delete all this point group stuff, the numerate, the nodes inside the dops. In the solver, we don't need a ground plane because we have a collision geometry and the gravity can be even lower with zero friction. This patch is gonna be our rest PT lattice, but we'll also need to create an animated underline guide. That will be our velo mesh and an animated underline collision that will be our collision. Then animate a deformation like this. One way to do it is to use a spherical mops falloff five units large. Wire a mops transform mode fire Animate this Y translation with ease in and no ease out, and remap the falloff, animating it to make it look as if a chocolate ball was deforming the patch. Wire it to both nodes, and for this to be our collision geometry, it needs to be 0.01 units below the vellum mesh, because this is the default thickness of the solver. Before running a test simulation, I know this paper should have thicker bands, so increase the scale of the band stiffness to 1, Enable plasticity if you haven't yet, for it will help create and keep more wrinkles while twisting. And this is more like what we'd expect from a paper. Reduce threshold to 0.1 and increase rate to 10. Don't forget to change the file name in the file cache node. And after we cache the simulation, we have a boring elevation asking for a twist. And by twist, I mean that the borders will spin clockwise and the center will move counterclockwise. I tried to do it using pop forces, but it gives me less control for too much work. So let's use our pin to target constraint. Erase these pins from here and zero out its influence over the bending. Now this mops falloff should tell which points should be the guides. These I painted with two mops falloff nodes to be our center and borders. Between the centers and borders, I painted another falloff to blend the opposite rotations that I created with these transform nodes. Additionally, I moved the base up and shrinked it to match where the borders are in my test simulation. So I made a couple test simulations and refined the weight and shape of the falloffs until I was happy. After that, you may want to use a smooth motion node to remove any jiggling. I've set its type to point and extract translation. And then a point deform node will get our crumpled patch, our rest underline pt underline lattice, and this smoothed guide. To get a smoother deformation, you can increase the capture radius to 0.5. If the mesh is intersecting too badly after deformation, you may need to run a third simulation. This is what I did with this other wrapping animation. You just need to clean your mesh from all previous simulation attributes and copy the velum nodes you used before to start fresh and use the pin to target again to try to match the animation. Now for the cherry on top, I suggest you to add even more crumpling in the shading. I used this crumpled paper normal texture from Grayscale Gorilla, combined two layers of it with different sizes, wired it to bump, and remember this first mops falloff we used to shrink the patch? I used it to blend this effect in the shading. Now have fun rendering it, lighting it, 
Let me know if you have any questions or have thought on another approach for this. And I'm curious about what do you want to learn next? Let me know in the comments. You can watch the other tutorials from this series on Patreon, as well as download the project files and some cool HDAs. Thank you and see ya!